Jew and Gentile, Chinese and American, British and Somalian, Turkish and Arab. For God so loves the world, not only the Jew, the salvation of the Jew, but the love of God is for the whole humanity. He is not loving, he is the God of love, because there's a difference between loving and love. Nicodemus, for God so loves the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. Praise the Lord. Then he said, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him may be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light came into the world and men love darkness rather than light because they did were evil for everyone that does evil hates the light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved but he that doeth the truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God now my God my God, he's a way maker. My God, he's a miracle worker. My God, he's a promise keeper. My God, he is what? Light in the darkness. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why I left Islam. And transform them, and by transforming them, build them up in theosis, build them up in divinization, build them up in sanctification. So the third eye, that we can actually do This is a, a Hindu concept, a Hindu category, and we just don't, that, that whole language is foreign to me. The, the, the I, we, we believe in communion with God through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Are you familiar with the, the, the acronym DMT? Dimethyltryptamine. No, I have Dimethyltryptamine is a substance in your brain that you will release when you're sleeping. It allows you to dream and have your dream-like images. Yeah. If you take certain plants and drink the liquid from these plants, you will actually end up in a spiritual dimension where you will actually be speaking to something. Not necessarily I, God, though. I, I didn't say that. I, I said something. <laughs> so my question to you is, are you aware of this? And are you aware even that some holy people back in the day would even do these things to make these connections and then come up with some ideas so, what was so going let me, on? let me address that point. Because there are religions that use drugs to induce spiritual states. Shamanism in Native America. Rastafarianism. Um, there, there's multiple different religions that do use drugs to induce spiritual states. However, as Christians, what we're saying is that our God is not dependent on some substance for us to have communion with him. We can have communion with him directly and personally. We have a saying in the church, where there is love, there is God. If you want to find God, look for love. If you want to allow God to commune with you, look for love. Find love in your life and you will be drawing closer to God in that process. Let me just, let me just, light, let me just, love. yes, but it also says, it also says in the writings of John that God is love as well. So the, these things are not mutually exclusive. It's not that he can be one and not be the other. He can be both. In terms of, in terms of, um, I, I want to address this point more fully because I think what we've got to do is we've got to take a step back and think about our paradigm. You know what I mean by a paradigm? A paradigm is, is our, the whole structure of our worldview, the complete meta-narrative. And what I'm saying is that, that Christianity is a complete meta-narrative that does not require to lend categories from other ideologies to, to beef it up. All we as Christians need to do is to, to delve into the depths of our own worldview to find the answer. So there is a whole tradition of Christian mysticism within the church. There are Christian mystics down through the ages. There are, there are Christians. No, they're not using drugs. That, that's a myth. Okay. They're not well, using drugs. I, I'm not sure you're correct, but I want to go back to something you started with. You said all humans were made in the image of God. So it doesn't matter whether you're Hindu or Christian or Muslim. You're really the same. And if the Hindus know something about the human phenomena that allows human beings to connect with God, and Christians are not aware of it, Christians can't say that their worldview is complete if they don't know something that makes them connect even stronger because they, don't, you know, they, they weren't taught it in the Bible. Well, let me, let me just address that point because what, what I'm talking about, when I say our worldview is complete, what I mean is 
We don't need to start lending from other religions in the sense of talking about the ideas of the third eye. We have an understanding of how we commune with the divine that is insular to our own faith. It doesn't mean that we can't learn new things, like about psychology, for instance. Or, yeah, we can learn new things. But in terms of the Christian mystical tradition, of which there is a, an array of Christian mystics down through the ages, the tools that they used to have those mystical experiences, the imminence of the divine, was things through prayer and contemplation and fasting for long periods of time. And what this allowed us, as the distractions of the world fell away, as the noise of the world fell away, as, as their, their own consciousness started to steady out like a, a lake whose ripples started to flatten out, it allowed the reflection of God to be seen as they looked and as they reflected within their own soul. They began to see that image of God. But the, I want to be clear, the image of God is what gives you dignity. It isn't the thing that allows you to commune with God. The thing that allows you to commune with God, which is what you are called to do, that's why you're made in His image, is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Those that don't have the Holy Spirit don't commune with God. They are dead in their sin, even if their heart is beating. Who are they communing with? Because they're claiming something that you can't dismiss as being not true. So who are they communing with? When they take a, a I won't mention it because it's been recorded, but they will take a drink, or they take something, and they will definitely go and have a spiritual experience. Yes. Who are they communing with from your paradigm, sure. from your worldview? I, I believe that I believe, for instance, Muhammad had a spiritual experience in the cave. I believe he had an encounter with a spiritual being. Let me finish. You've I'm asked a question, back, allow me to finish. Because his wife brother, thought he was communing with brother, demons. Brother, brother, allow me to finish. He, so, so, uh, but allow me to finish, okay. brother. You asked a question, have the courtesy to allow me to reply. Because if you just interrupt and you start asking auxiliary questions, then I never get around to answering your first one. I want to, I want the first so, one, yeah. So, the, the, who are they communing with? It's, it, it's for us as Christians, Joseph Smith. I believe had a spiritual experience. Okay. I believe that many people can have spiritual experiences that are not Christian. I have seen with my own eyes a miracle inside a Hindu temple. Okay. So I don't, I don't claim miracles are, are the universal experience of Christians okay. or that spiritual experiences are the universal experience of just Christians. Okay. I believe anyone can have a spiritual experience, but the question is if that spiritual experience is taking you away from God, if it is taking you away from Yahweh, if it is taking you away from the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, then it is demonic in nature. It is from a demon. It is from an antichrist. So those spiritual experiences that guide people away from the worship of Yahweh, the, the worship of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, are demonic. That's nonsense. Okay. People have been using things like ayahuasca and other things for a long, yes, long they time. Have. Way before it. the book was made up to I do totally with your religion. With you. And those, those concepts that you're talking about, they're, sorry, this is not, they're actual realities that people enter into. I don't deny the realities. I'm not denying the realities. But you're saying unless it's conformed into your strict little box of being Christian, or to do, then it ain't a real thing. That's nonsense. No, you, you, how, brother, can you, how can with you respect. disrespect? The allow me to reply. Peoples, the tribal allow, people allow me to reply. Well, man, allow me to reply. I, 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 I say it really easily because I'm not denying the reality of the experience. I'm quite willing to accept that they are having spiritual experiences, but just because, but just because they are old does not mean that they are leading a right. The reality is God has chosen to reveal himself in history, firstly through his people Israel that he set up and established as an example to the nations as a way of demonstrating his power. And I'll give you an example of what that looks like. There are many peoples in history that have disappeared from the histories. We can no longer speak of them, such as, for instance, the Picts of Scotland. You just spoke of them. Yeah, 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 but as a historical point. Those, those, their culture has gone, their sense of identity has vanished, they're no longer present. The Jewish people have survived thousands of years and numerous attempts to wipe them out, one of which most recently was done by Nazi Germany. But they survive. Why? Because God has made a covenant with his people that he will be their God and he will preserve them. Many other nations have gone through horrendous events like the Jews. 
but they they have disappeared from the histories. The Romans wiped out entire peoples. Yes, they did. Yeah, but they didn't wipe out the Jews, despite the fact that they attempted to. Okay, I'm going to say something controversial, but we'll go with it. Have you heard of a book called The Secret Memoirs of John Mackey, written in 1733? Have you ever heard of this? No, I've never heard of this. Right, John Mackey was in the 1700s, 1600s, he was like a 007, he was a spy. And he was spying on the royal family that was kicked out of England. The Jacobites, the Stuarts. The Stuarts. Yeah. Yeah. He was spying on them to make sure they didn't come back to reclaim the throne. Yep. Okay. All the pity. I'll buy the Jacobites. I'll buy the Stuarts. Anyway, but the point is this. He was spying on them and he basically described what these Stuarts look like. Yeah. The, uh, the aristocracy of the time who were living in France. He described them. Okay. Let me go back one step further. When Cicero came to this country with the Roman army, I mean, he took back a long way. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm describing. There's a huge. There's a huge no, no. gulf between Cicero Six, and the guy. You're... 1600s. Sixteen hundreds was the Stuarts. Now I'm going to go back even further, nearly two thousand years before the Stuarts. Cicero was in this country describing the original Britons, mm. the Britons, and he described them in a similar way to the Stuarts were described in the um, Secret Realms of John Mackey, in a similar way. Do you know what the original Brits looked like? You or me? In the time when the Romans came here? With respect, I mean... The, the Britons, ancient Britons. What, 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 with respect, this just seems to me like hopping no, randomly no, no. from one right, topic to another. People being destroyed and being erased from history. We're going to that point. Yeah. And I'm saying to you, there were a bunch of people living in this yeah, country, the, the, the Brits. The, the Celts, the Celts were, we, we know what happened to the Celts. They were driven right back to the brink of destruction by the Anglo-Saxons. And right. the Anglo-Saxons themselves were driven to the point of destruction by the Danes. I know the history of the island. My family Family's been here for a thousand years. I, right. I, I, it's well, part of my history. You, Cicero told me in his books, in his writings, he said that the ancient Britons, some of the tribes, look like me, not like you. That's fine. You look I like. No, no, I'm, not, look I'm, not, like I'm not even going to. No, 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 no. I'll explain something. And then, and around the time when Oliver Cromwell had a punch up with the Stuarts and he rounded up a whole bunch of people in rebellion and he sent them to America and the Caribbean and those guys look like me. Okay. In other words, there are ancient uh, Britons allow me to living reply. in the Caribbean today. Allow me to reply. We don't even know they're British. Allow me, allow me to reply. The, 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 what I think, brother, is I, I would seriously encourage you to look critically at the history that you've accepted. Allow me to finish. Allow me to finish. I allow I you agree. to finish. I agree. Because, unfortunately, there, there is a tendency to, to adopt these kind of conspiratorial theories that are in essence ridiculous. Why is they that are wrong? ridiculous. Is allow this, me, allow me to wrong? finish. Allow me to finish. They are ridiculous. Because? They are ridiculous because the evidence of history is is quite clear. But I, I, and this is such a minor point. I really don't want to lose something much more important to this minor point. The evidence of history is quite clear that the ethnos that lived in Britannia from Roman periods was white. I'm, I'm guessing by look like me, you're referring to the color of the skin. I'm guessing that's what you're referring to. Now, we, we know, bro, we know, bro, that all human beings were black at some point. We came out of Africa. I've got no problem with that. We know that the very first Europeans looked more like you than they do like me. We became white over time. I've got no issue with any of that. But what I'm saying is, there's something so much more fundamental that you're, you're missing, okay. which is that it, with, with the deepest of respect, you come across to me as someone who's picked up an idea from over here, and you've picked up an idea from over here, and you've picked up an idea from over here, and you've brought it all together and you're trying to make sense of it all into one coherent narrative that makes sense. And what I'm saying to you is that as a Christian, what we do is we build ourselves and our worldview upon the prophets and the apostles, and that is where you need to anchor yourself, upon the church's teaching, which is the pillar of truth, which existed in Africa at the same time as it existed in Europe, and at the same time that it existed in the Middle East. Let that inform your worldview. Let that inform your values. Let that inform your sense of history. Let that inform <coughs> your sense of identity. Here's the thing. And then you don't have to mishmash I grew, I random grew up ideas as, I together. I grew up as a Christian. I grew up as a Christian, yeah. and I have a trouble trusting people who clearly lost their moral compass and then pretend that they have been good all the time. I yeah. have trouble with that one. Now, don't get me wrong, I believe in goodness. I believe in it. I would even say that it's what I stand on to this very day. 
why I'm talking to you for so long. Because I'm hearing wisdom coming from your mouth anyway. But I'm testing things. But, but nonetheless, people who claim to be on the right path, somehow lose their moral compass and allow themselves to be deviated and go into wickedness, which they then really can't justify. And they will kind of change things around to make it appear to be okay. And so my, my only point is this. What is the real path that Christians can walk down that really brings out the very, very, very best in humans so they become the very best versions of themselves yep. and not just pretend to be the best versions okay. through lip service? So, so, so let, let, let me address that point because I want, I want to suggest to you you need to look at the problem differently. Okay. It isn't a thing that, that, that Christians have lost their moral compass. I'm trying to say to you that the Christian worldview says that you're born with the compass pointing in the wrong direction. You're actually born wicked, with a bias towards... This is let me finish. The point. Let me finish. And I don't agree with this. Let me finish. It. Where we are born with our compass pointing in the right direction, and that actually the process of divinization, the process of theosis, the process of sanctification, whatever term we want to use, is the process by which we turn the compass around. But that takes time and practice. Have now, you got children? What, now, now, let me. No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to deal with okay. the point that you made. I'm not going to move on to another one. So in terms of, in terms of your question, I want to suggest to you that actually it's about discovering the right compass, not about losing the right compass. So it's to reframe the question. Right? I don't like your paradigm yeah. and I'll tell you why. Wait, wait I haven't finished no, 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 no. because the point that you asked is what can we do? So I'm going to go back over what I said. So the way that we do it, now bear in mind, let, let me get through it all before you interject. The disciplines, because now it's going to be on camera, which means you can come and reference it on the camera. Okay? So you can reference it on the film. The disciplines. But, but, but when we can find you on YouTube. Soko Films. Soko <laughs> Films. Soko Films. Are, are these your people? Uh, so this is Soko Films, and this is the second best channel in Speakers Corner for content over everything. <laughs> content over everything. Over console, C-O-E. Okay? Yeah. But this is I the best channel. I think you're paying him very well. This is the best channel. Trust me, he no pays money. me nothing. He pays me nothing. No so in, in terms of... In terms of... In terms of... In terms of the, 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 these are the things that you and anyone else who's a Christian can do. Yeah, I, okay? sorry, I want to write down. Yeah, yeah okay. You, you, re, re, right, so you've got se you, seven disciplines regular oh, oh. prayer, regular fasting, regular periods yes. of self reflection and private personal examination, regular giving, alm, uh, uh, regular giving alms to the poor, and especially those within the church. Regularly evangelizing, regularly studying the faith, live inside a Christian community, don't just attend one once a week on a Sunday. In addition to those seven disciplines, cultivate the virtues of having a mindset that has faith and faithfulness, that has the, a mindset of um, hope and uh, love and prudence and charity and um, chastity and um, simplicity practice a mindset have that kind of mindset where you ascribe those things with value so that you live a life accordingly at the same time reject things like lust and envy and wrath and jealousy and gluttony and and apathy for the soul and and care for the soul reject those things yeah. in addition Practice the sacraments, the receiving of the body and blood of our Lord, receiving of baptism, confirmation, the, the, the sacrament of confession, the sacrament of marriage, the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, the sacrament of the anointing of the dead. Receive these sacraments, cultivate the virtues, practice the disciplines, and, and resist the devil, and he will flee. And this is how you will allow theosis to occur because you will create space through all of these things for the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Because human beings live by habits. So if we habitually practice living a certain way, then when we come to that reaction moment, when we've got to react, we will react out of our habit of thinking and our habit of behavior rather than the, the current habit that we might have, which is to get angry or to give in to our lust or anything else. But you do know the Lord that you very say, the God that you're talking about, he himself says in the Bible, I am a wrathful God and I'm going to smite those um, Israelites for not obeying me. So he himself is a bad tempered God, isn't he? 
Okay, so let me answer that question. <laughs> it's a fair question. You know, you know, you know, people like you, sir. You're the people I come to the corner. You're the reason why I come to the corner. Okay. Because your questions are sincere. Your attitude is about learning. You are the very example of the kind of person that I wish this park was full of and that I could speak to all the time. Yeah. Rather than the ideologues that I end up having to fight. No, well, now, the, 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 the point that I'm saying to you, yes, the God of the Old Covenant was disciplining the people of Israel. He was chastising the people of Israel. He was exemplifying the people of Israel amongst the nations. But he always preserved them. He always kept them. His love for them was eternal. In the new covenant, which is what we Christians see ourselves as being a part of, God has demonstrated himself as a loving father, as a brother, as a king, as a comforter and an advocate. And he is the God that is above us that we should worship, the God that is beside us that we should follow as an example, and the God that is within us that we should allow to transform our hearts. Let me ask you this question. I'm, I'm guessing this charming lady is your your wife or your uh, girlfriend, is that right? Um, on the camera, let's Fair enough, okay. <laughs> but what I would encourage you to do, what I would encourage you to do is to reconnect with your faith. Because being a Christian is about being a kind of human. A kind of or a kind of? A, a kind of human, not a kinder human. Yeah, it's okay. It is about being a kind of human. It's about being a certain type of human being. And we read the scriptures and we see all these stories in the scriptures and then we think to ourselves, well, how does a story about Jesus being taken up to Jerusalem as a child inform my life? How does that inform my life? How can I base my life upon a story like that? Well, the reason for that is that it presents us with images. Yeah. Hello. It presents us, that's some strong wind, it's blowing the camera. You want to put the stabilizer Yeah. It, it, let me just grab that one for you. It presents us, it pre the, the Bible presents us, I'm going to give you a way of reading and using the Bible. The Bible presents us with images that we are then to absorb into our life. Let me give you some images, as a, just as a quick example to show you what I mean by that. The story of the Magi who came to see Jesus as a child. Right? We've got the image of the wise men following a star to a city to see the Christ child. How can you build your life on that? Let me explain. The image of the star is, what you do is you put yourself into each of those images. So you become a different kind of image in each case. Are you the light that points towards Jesus, like the star pointing towards Jesus? Are you the wise man, the magi that seek after the true king? Are you the one that presents your gifts to him? Or are you like Herod? Herod, who is the one who sought the child only to destroy the truth. There are people here that seek knowledge about the Christian faith only to attack it. Don't be one of the Herods in the park. Don't be one of the destroyers of truth. Are you, are you like Mother Mary and, and, and the adopted father Joseph who care for the truth and treasure the truth above all other things? Are you, what, where are you in that story? Which of those people is the one that you are most like? It seems to me, and I don't know you. I, 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 I'm not sure if you're just um, talking generally. Yeah, no. I wanted to, are you asking me directly to answer the question? I'm asking you directly. Which All one right. of those people? I would say of those people, I am the one who actually, I'm looking for truth. So you're the Magi? I'm looking for truth. And I don't care if truth is in Hinduism, yeah. Islam, Christianity. I don't care. I want truth. Yes. I want the reality. Yes. And if the reality takes me down this road, and I, and I can, okay, you're saying all humans are born in the image of God. Yes. If that's true, then we should be God-like now. No. Yes, we should. That's not what we mean by that. And one more time. If we are made, okay, if I'm made in the image of something, then I surely must be demonstrating that in some way in my life. If I'm made in the image of a demon, then surely I'm going to be demonic in my behavior. Yep. And if I'm made in the image of a God, then surely I must be able to demonstrate that in my behavior. Yep. Surely. So let me, let me just... And, if, and, and if I'm a, a God-like person, but I'm lost, yeah, I've lost my way, then finding my way will bring me back to where I'm supposed to be, which is God-like, surely. Yeah. So, okay. no, I'm not agreeing with you, I'm just letting you and so continue. I am the person who's looking for the truth that allows me to be the very best version of myself. So, let me, let me, because I, I agree with you, you are made in the image of God, which means that your intuition 
whilst not always being the best uh, compass, is something that you should listen to. Within our understanding of God, our highest value is the value of love. That is the most important thing about the way to be a Christian, is to love. Now sometimes love is hard because you have to discipline a child. Sometimes love is tough and aggressive because you have to defend your family. But love in all normal circumstances is compassionate, edifying, building up, encouraging, giving of hope, seeking to heal, forgiving. It is patient, kind and generous. It doesn't keep a list of ills. Love is all those things that are described in scripture. Now, whenever I ask this question to people, and I'm gonna ask it to you now, can you think to me of a value greater than love to build your life upon? I think I've come to the conclusion that that might be at the top. Right, and every person I ask, whether they're Muslim, Jewish, Hindu, says exactly the same. So what you should do is you should find that religion that corresponds to this intuition. Now, when you look at Islamic theology, by contrast, yeah, I could use Hinduism. Let's use Hinduism since you've mentioned it, you've referenced the third eye. Within Hinduism, the highest value is devotion. Devotion through ritualistic practices. So you see these shamans who will, you know, cover their body in ashes and they'll fast for days. I mean, they put everyone else to shame with their fasting. And they'll do things like there was one particularly holy man in India who had not sat down for 30 years. Can you imagine? <laughs> He'd not sat down for 30 years. Because in Hinduism, in the Hindu worldview, the idea of religio and, and devotio religio, de religious devotion, is the highest value, it's more important than love. So you have examples, such as the example of Sutti, which is the example of taking your wife and throwing her on the funeral pyre. Yeah, so the husband's burning and they grab the living wife and chuck her into the flames because the idea of devotion is the highest value. Yeah? Now look at Islam, just to give another example. The highest embodiment, the highest value in Islam is submission. You should submit to Allah in anything he says. You submit what, even if your conscience tells you not to, you should submit. So their highest value is submission. The Hindu's highest value is the idea of divatio religioso. The highest value within Christianity is caritas. And yet your conscience tells you that caritas, love, is the thing, the highest value to build your life upon. So listen to this intuition. Your image of God within you is speaking to you like the Northern Star. But the religion, the image of God within you, the image, the imiatio deo, the image of God within you is not just there pristine, it's muddied, it's covered in dirt. It's an image, but it's covered in filth, which we call sin. We have to recover that image in ourselves through those practices, or sacraments and disciplines shower, that we've talked about. Which is, which is what we've just talked about, the idea of the disciplines, the sacraments, the cultivation of virtue, the resistance of the, the, the sinful nature. I hope that helps you. Can I ask you, bro, what's your name? Miles. Miles, I hope everyone prays for you, Miles. I'll be praying yeah, for you. Do you, have a, do you have a Bible at home, Miles? Absolutely. Michael Miles <laughs> family. I, I would encourage you. I, 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 wanna... I, I even have a Quran at home. Right. I, wanna, I, wanna... I even have a Bhagavad Gita Quran. at home and Brilliant. a Mahabharata. I, I also have a Quran. I also have, have a Bhagavad Gita. I've, I've got, got a Book of Mormon. I, I, I can tell. A Book of I've Mormon. Got some I've, got of, I've got some of the writings of the <laughs> Bayou Allah. You know, I've got is a the pop old rule from America yeah, as well. So, so what I would encourage you to do, I'm going to give you some exercises about how to read your Bible, and these are for anyone else that wants to do them. Yeah. You, you can get all of this off SoCo Films. SoCo. S O C O SoCo Films. Films. Okay. So, in terms of these are these are the, this is a way to use your Bible to help you. When you're reading the stories, one of the exercises that we do, I'm going to give you three ways to read the scriptures. One, the exercise of the Lexio Divina, which is the divine word. So you you read the word, you just read it once all the way through. You don't, you don't, you, and you, you don't, you just focus on the words, you just read the words, you let them flow over you. And you, you start to try registering in your heart which, which verse or line or word 
creates a vibration within your soul. Then you read it again, okay? And, and you see if that vibration reoccurs. If that vibration reoccurs, you read it again. And then you take a moment to pause and reflect on your life and about how that particular passage, that particular verse speaks to your soul and how it can begin, how, how you might need to change or adjust or to celebrate or rejoice in, in what that, that, that vibration within your soul has given you. So that's the Lexio Divina way. Another way is the idea of the images and the idea of meditating upon the images. We use, because it's still Christmas, today is the last day of Christmas, everybody. Yeah. It, it is, but that's a separate topic. But we use the idea of the Magi, Herod, the Joseph and Mary. Right, you imagine yourself as the characters in the story. Am I the Pharisee that's attacking Jesus? Am I the woman that is having the blood clot? Am I like the star? You imagine yourself in the star and you think to you, you imagine yourself in as, as one of the images in the story and say, how does that impact my life? How does that flow out in my life? And then the, the so that's the, that's the idea of the, the meditation. The final way is you read it in the sort of uh, theological manner. So I'll give you an example. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 says, I offer your souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice to the Lord our God, which is your act of worship as a sensible people, and be, and be no longer conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you, you then think to yourself, well, what, what, are, what is the mindset that I see in the Bible? And you look for the key words, things like faith, hope, and charity. And you think to yourself, right, how do I, how do I implement that in my life? I'm told in scripture that I shouldn't blaspheme against the name of God. I shouldn't act in the in vain, use God's name in vain, which means doing things in God's name that are against God's will. Yeah, so you, you, you sort of take a principle there, you discern a principle and you apply it as a discipline in your life. So there's, there's three ways there that you can read the Bible and use it to apply to your life. And you might also find it interesting to read about the Christian mystics and about the mystical experiences within Christianity. Because we've got a whole tradition there. We're not some dry legalistic religion. Anyway, God bless. Thank you very much. You look after Thank yourself. You, sir. Day. And you, sister. Subscribe sister, like do you have a Bible? I do. Yeah. Brilliant. Then, then please read. Merry Christmas. Subscribe Merry to the Christmas. channel. So <laughs> boys, it's all for your Yeah. Right. Thank you. So what's your name? What's your name? Miles. Miles. Ah, there. <laughs> okay. Wrap up. Wrap up. So what happened there? Um, I, I can never criticize. I can't criticize JC for coming late <laughs> because I, I I I've come late so many times. Yeah, However, guys, this all guys, sorry this oops, sorry this all emerged. Um, this all emerged from a debate when a, a Muslim started ranting at me about the. The, the World War One and World War Two being a Christians killing hundreds of millions of people. Uh, that, that, that's that, what he said. Did, did you say Christian? Christian. That's what he said. He said that Christians were responsible for World War One and World War Two, and and for the murder of the Jews. That's what he said. He's, he's he's knocking about with his camera. So obviously then we started talking about we started we started talking about we started talking about we started talking about, about um, anti-Semitism within Islamic teaching and the anti-Semitism of Muhammad and what he did and what he taught will happen to the Jews. And then we got talking about the slave trade, the Islamic slave trade, the Christian slave trade, and the fact that Christians fought against slavery for 2,000 years. And from then we ended up talking about what it means to live as a Christian and, and that's where we're up to. And hopefully guys, you've all taken something worth doing. Seven disciplines, cultivation of a virtue ethic, resisting of the seven cardinal sins, the practice of the sacraments, and, and, and you know, a knowledge and reading of the prophetic and the apostolic writings and getting that into your heart and your life. That is the way of being a Christian. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bob. There we go.